Welcome to Angos Software's three-part series on the credit scorecard development process. Credit scorecards allow financial services organizations to augment and extend generic score-based systems in order to make more differentiated decisions at the individual borrower level. Predictive analytics capabilities and the ability to act on their insights and best actions throughout the credit decisioning lifecycle is recognized as a strategic competitive advantage, resulting in improved profitability and market share growth particularly for customer acquisition and retention strategies. In these three videos, we will discuss the eight-step process required from ideation to implementation of a credit scorecard inside your organization. The eight steps in the scorecard development process are data collection, data preparation, variable selection, course classing, model development, model validation, scorecard scaling, and deployment. In this first video, we will introduce the credit scorecard concept and discuss the first two steps, data collection and data preparation. Credit scoring is a necessity and core business function to almost any organization offering credit as a service to its customers. Typical credit products include credit cards, loans, and mortgages provided by financial services organizations. However, credit scoring is also key for companies that offer products on credit, such as utilities, online and brick and mortar retailers, and telecommunications providers. Generally speaking, the use of a credit scorecard is simply a neutral, objective way to approach assessing the creditworthiness of customers and applications. Scorecards are typically presented in a tabular form, like the one you see here. This is known as the standard scorecard format. The standard scorecard format assigns base points to each account to start with, and then depending on where the customer falls within the ranges of specific characteristics, predictors, or variables, the card assigns certain extra points. The customer score is simply the summation of the points assigned. Credit data sets can have thousands of variables. However, in most cases, an effective scorecard requires only 10 to 20 of the most predictive variables. There are several advantages to the standard scorecard format. Instead of dealing strictly with probabilities, we are working with points, which allows an easier interpretation of which customers are better or worse customers and why. This also allows the customers themselves to more easily understand how they can improve their scores and identify any discrepancies. Given a simple set of if-then-else rules, point assignment and summation, the task of deploying the scorecard is easy and straightforward in most IT environments. Now we will look at the typical stages in the lifetime of any credit product and the corresponding scorecard models that we build to calculate the likelihood of default or the credit worthiness of the customers at each stage. The origination level is where new customers are applying for credit. In this stage, we are building an application scorecard the purpose of which is to calculate the likelihood that if we accept this customer and grant them credit, they will meet their obligations. Once we have accepted certain customers, we want to monitor their behavior, product usage, and repayment. We want to make sure that they are continuing to meet their obligations, so we are calculating the likelihood that they will become delinquent at a specific point in the future. Of course, it is inevitable that some of these customers will be delinquent in their payments and labeled in collections. In this case, we are building a scorecard to assess the likelihood that we will be able to recover via self-cure or through a collections effort. The first step in the scorecard development process is data collection. There are two sources of data used in credit scorecards, internal data sources taken from within the organization and external data sources acquired from a third-party vendor. From inside the organization, we have application data. This is information collected from the customer at the time of their application, such as age, income, and years at current residence. We also collect, over time, behavioral data, variables like balance, product usage, and payment history that come to represent our customer. There are also two types of external data sources. Bureau sources, such as Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, that identify a customer's level of risk, and demographics databases from providers like Axiom and Mosaic that deepen the demographic profiles of our customers. The second step in the scorecard development process is the data preparation stage, 
where we are appending and aggregating our files and values. This is a significant step in the process. At times, it is difficult to separate from the previous step of identifying sources and collecting the data. This is because over the course of preparing the data, we often discover that more or different data is required, which of course in turn must then be prepared. The data preparation procedure is often the most time-consuming step in the whole scorecard development process, typically consuming 50 to 80 percent of the project's time. As part of this process, we have to find and treat our outliers, including defining what we consider outliers to be. We must deal with the most common value in any business data set, the missing one. To address them, we ask questions like, what is their source? Do we replace them or keep them as is? And then develop a systematic way of treating these missing values. Sometimes we find that the values we have are not sufficient to build a strong scorecard. In this case, we may need to calculate values such as averages, aggregations, or summaries. The data preparation step also requires us to decide on three windows that specify our data. The first time window is the modeling window, the time frame for data on which we will build our model. For example, we can say that the data is going to be covering the range of behavior from January 1st until December 31st. The second window is the prediction window. So when we say default may happen, at what time might it occur? In a month, 90 days, a year? To test the model, we must come up with a third window, out of time. We want to see whether the changes in the population during that time actually affected the scorecard or not. We hope you found the first part of our three-part series on the scorecard development process informative. In part two, we will discuss variable selection, course classing, model development, and model validation. To learn more about credit scorecards, you can visit our credit scoring page on angos.com or download the Better Scorecards Faster eBook. If you have any questions about this process, scorecards, or predictive analytics in general, you can submit them through our website and one of our predictive analytics experts will get back to you. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again in part two.